Hey there, cool cats. Time for your daily dose of Judy Bloom's Double Fudge. We are on chapter 15, Yelraf Rose. It was so great to have the apartment back to ourselves. It felt huge. It felt peaceful. Who ever thought life with my family could ever feel peaceful? No more weights to use the bathroom. No more hot dog rolls that lined up on the living room floor. With the Howies staying in the Chen's apartment, I'd hardly ever have to see them. Not only that, but the natural beauties aren't going to my school. They're taking dance classes and voice classes and drama classes all day, every day. Yes, I thought. I have my life back. Dad proposed we celebrate our own small family by having dinner at Isola, our favorite neighborhood restaurant. As soon as we walked in, I noticed Courtney, this girl from my humanities class. She was with her family. Hi, Peter, she said. Oh, uh, hi, Courtney. Where are the Heavenlies, she asked. I hope they're coming back to school soon. They're so cool. They're not coming back to school. That is so disappointing. I shrugged. Tell them Courtney from Humanity said hi. I'll do that. As I walked away, I heard Courtney telling her parents, that's Peter Hatcher. He's related to the Heavenly Hatchers. He's so lucky. As soon as I sat down at our table, Fudge asked, Is that your girlfriend, Pete? No, that's not my girlfriend, I told him. I don't have a girlfriend. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you about her. Don't worry, Pete. Someday you'll find one. I'm not worried. Because you're not that ugly. Would somebody turn him off, I said to my parents. That's enough fudge, Mom said. Tootsie banged on the table with a spoon. Eee! Enough! Foo! And then she threw the spoon. It just missed the waiter who was bringing us a basket of bread. Fudge helped himself to a piece, pushed out the middle, and stuffed it into his mouth. Mom handed his crust to Tootsie. Guess who came to Mixed Up Group today, Fudge asked, his mouth so full he could hardly talk. Rumpelstiltskin, I said. Fudge laughed. Don't laugh with food in your mouth, told him. Why not? Mom and I answered at the same time. I said, because it's disgusting. And Mom said, because you could choke. It was the stranger danger policeman, Fudge said, after he chewed and swallowed. He showed us a video, and then we all got secret code names. Only our family can know our secret code name. You want to hear mine? And he motioned for us to come closer. I have to whisper so no one else can hear. We learned that. We all leaned in. It's Eggduff Muriel, Fudge told us. Isn't that a good code name? Eggduff, I said. What kind of name is that? Shh, Fudge said. And then he whispered again. It's Fudge, spelled backwards. Oh, yeah. Fudge, spelled backwards. Very clever. What about the Muriel part, Mom asked. That's how you get your code name, Fudge explained. You spell your first name backwards, and then you use your grandma's first name for your last name. Suppose you have more than one grandma, I asked. Peter, Dad said, let's not make this more complicated than it already is. Yeah, okay, I said, but I don't get the point of this secret code name. It's in case someone tries to steal me, Pete. Steal you, I asked would want to steal him. Yeah, Pete, like some stranger comes up and says, your mom's in the hospital and I'm supposed to take you to see her. Mom said, I never want you to go anywhere with a stranger, no matter what. I know, Fudge said. I don't talk to strangers. I don't get into car with strangers. I don't help strangers find their puppies. So there. That's exactly right, Mom told him. She took a long drink of water. But just in case, Fudge said, it's good to have a code name. So if a stranger does come up to me and say, please help me find my puppy, I can say, what's my code name? And if he doesn't know, I don't go with him. That got Mom really upset. Fudge, listen carefully, she said. It doesn't matter what a stranger said. It doesn't matter if the stranger is a man or a woman or a teenager. If a stranger tries to talk to you, you shout, I don't talk to strangers. And then you run as fast as you can until you can find someone you trust. A policeman or a teacher or a, a dog, Fudge asked. Woof, woof, Tootsie said. Not a dog, Mom told him. How could a dog help you? 
That was a joke, Mom, Fudge said. Mom turned to Dad. I think I'd better have a talk with William and find out what all this is about. It's about stranger danger, Mom, Fudge said. I already told you that. A few days before Halloween, the elevator in our building was converted to self-service. We'd known for months it was going to happen. On the inside, the elevator still looks the same, with a mirrored wall and an upholstered bench. But now instead of Henry running it all, all you have to do is push a button to get out on the floor you want. Henry says he's looking forward to his new job as the superintendent of our building. The best thing about the new elevator is the tiny video camera. It's supposed to be for security, or stranger danger, as Fudge says. That way, nobody can get into our elevator without Henry knowing about it. He can watch what's happening on a monitor in our lobby. Anyone else who's interested can watch too. At first, everybody in the building stopped to have a look. Oh, there's Mrs. Tubman putting on her lipstick. Isn't that Mr. Perez tying his running shoes? Ooh, the Rileys are kissing. Hi, Gina Golden is adjusting her underwear. It was like candid camera. Soon, everyone wised up to the fact that they could be seen on the monitor. And after that, the Rileys held hands but didn't kiss, and most people stopped checking themselves out in the mirror. Except Fudge. The minute he realized he could be seen on video, he started jumping up and down, waving his arms, making stupid faces, usually with his tongue hanging out. Henry called a meeting just for the kids in the building, especially since Halloween is coming. The trick-or-treat sign-up sheet is already posted in the elevator. That's one great thing about living in a high-rise in New York. You never have to leave your building to go trick-or-treating. Not that I'll be trick-or-treating anymore. No, my trick-or-treat days are over. It makes me feel funny to think I'm too old for trick-or-treating. Reminds me of how I felt when I had my first double-digit birthday. Ten, I kept saying to myself. I'll be in the double digits for the rest of my life. Unless I live to be over a hundred. Yeah, that'd be cool to get into the triple-digit birthdays. Olivia Osterman might make it. If she does, and if I ever get another dog, I'll name him George or Rufus in her honor. At the kids' meeting, Henry reminded us that the video camera is for security, not our entertainment, and he looked directly at Fudge. He demonstrated how to use the door open and door close buttons. He asked us to close our eyes and feel the numbers and the symbols on the buttons. They were all in Braille, so people who are blind, like Mr. Willard, can use the elevator on his own. Henry said, anyone who pushes buttons just for fun will lose elevator privileges. He showed us how we could talk to him and he could talk to us in case there was an incident. What's an incident? Fudge asked. Anything that's not supposed to happen in the elevator, Henry said. What's not supposed to happen? Let me put it this way, Fudge. The only thing that's supposed to happen is you push the button for the floor you want, the elevator takes you there, and you get out. Same as when I was running the elevator for you. Then he tested all the kids under 12. If you passed Henry's test, you were allowed to use the elevator on your own. If you didn't, too bad. You'd have to take it again. Fudge passed on his first try. Does Minnie have a code name? Fudge asked Eudora. We were in the elevator on Saturday morning. Eudora was on her way to the park with Fudge and Minnie. I was meeting Jimmy at the subway station. He was coming up to spend the day with me. What kind of code name? Eudora asked Fudge. You know, Fudge said, a code name, so nobody can steal him. Steal him, Eudora asked? Yes. Farley knows he's not supposed to talk to strangers, Eudora said. Only Eudora and Howie still call Minnie Farley. Yeah, but does he know if a stranger asks him to help find a puppy, he should run the other way and yell as loud as he can and tell a good grown-up? Eudora grabbed Minnie's hand. Right now, I don't let him out of my sight when we're on the street. She was quiet for a minute, and then she asked Fudge if he had a code name. Fudge nodded. A secret code name that only the family knows. You want to hear it? Well, yes, I guess since I'm family, I should hear it. It's Eggduff Muriel, Fudge whispered. What an unusual name, Eudora said. Isn't that an unusual name, Farley? Eggduff, Minnie said. Shh, Fudge warned him. Never say it out loud. Eggduff. Minnie whispered. That's better, Fudge said. In case you want to know what it means, it's Fudge spelled backwards. Eudora was quiet for a minute, and then she said, Yellraff. What? Fudge asked. Yellraff, Eudora repeated. That's Farley spelled backwards. 
Now he needs a last name. Do you have a mother, Eudora? I did, but she died a few years ago. Her name was Rose. You got that, Minnie, Fudge said. Your code name is Yellraff Rose, but it's a secret, so don't tell anyone. I think Minnie's too young to get it, I told Fudge. You're never too young for a code name, Pete, and you're never too older. You better start working on yours if you're going to take the subway by yourself. Thanks for the advice, Fudge. Better safe than sorry, that's what Grandma always says. Now that I admit it to Fudge, but all his talk about code names got me thinking. Maybe I should have one, too. Hmm, let's see. I spelled my name backwards in my head. Retep. Then I threw in my middle name spelled backwards just to make it more interesting. Nera. And then I added my grandmother's name, Muriel. That made me Retep, Nera, Muriel. Good name. But who should I tell? Not Fudge. He'd broadcast it to the world. Jimmy? I don't think so. He might laugh. I still couldn't figure out having a code name would help if I met up with trouble on the subplace, subway or any place else. As soon as the Howies were settled in the Chen's apartment, Eudora invited us down to dinner. Will I have to go? I asked Mom. Yes. Can't you tell them I have a stomach ache or something? No. Can I go home the second I'm done eating because I have a lot of homework? You can go home as soon as the table is cleared, Mom said, as long as you're polite about it. Well, I'll be very polite. You wouldn't believe how polite I can be when I want to be polite. I'll be so polite. Okay, Peter, Mom said. I get your point. At the dinner table, the talk turned to Halloween. Fudge said, Minnie can trick or treat with me. We're taking him, Flora said. We've always been curious about Halloween, Fauna said. What's all this talk about Halloween, Howie asked. You know how I feel about candy. We don't care about the, Fauna began. Candy, Flora said. We're interested in the cultural event, Fauna said. We want to observe, Flora said. As part of our studies, Fauna said. Mom told Cousin Howie how safe it is to trick-or-treat in our building. We know all the neighbors. Eudora said it might be educational for them to experience Halloween one time, Howie. Howie drummed his fingers on the table. His eyebrows crept together. And after a while, he said, All right, but just this one time. And no candy. Candy will rot your teeth. You don't have to worry about candy, Daddy, the natural beauty said together. I was beginning to see how this worked. Cousin Howie said no to everything. The natural beauties begged and pleaded. Eudora was usually on their side. She had to present the case very carefully to Howie. But in the end... The natural beauties almost always got their way. What's Minnie going to be for Halloween, Fudge asked. He's going to be a, Flora began, tiger, Fauna said. Minnie growled. Or maybe a, Flora began again, lion, Fauna said. Minnie growled louder this time. I know, Flora said. He wants to be a manatee, Fauna guessed. Sure, she got it right this time. No, Minnie shouted, surprising everyone. Egg duff! Egg duff, Flora said. What's an egg duff? It's me, Fudge told them. Minnie wants to be me for Halloween. You? The natural beauty said at the same time. Yes, Fudge told them. Yellraff Rose wants to be egg duff Muriel. Does anybody know what's going on here? Howie asked. I do, Eudora said, and it makes perfect sense. On Halloween night, the natural beauties brought Minnie up to our apartment. Fudge was already dressed as a miser in a white shirt, red pair of suspenders, and his money tie from the Bureau of Printing and Engraving. He carried his pouch of shredded money in one hand, and in the other, his trick-or-treat bag. Mom had another white shirt ready for Minnie, along with a second pair of red suspenders. Since there was only one money tie, Mom let Fudge decorate an old green tie of Dad's. He drew dollar signs with wings all over it. Mom plunked a men's hat on each of their heads. Then she snapped photos of the two of them, the miser and his double. The doorbell rang. It was Melissa Beth Miller from downstairs. She was carrying her cat in a basket. Fuzzball was wearing a pointy black hat. He's my wizard, she said, and I'm Hermione from... Don't say it out loud, Fudge shouted. Don't worry, Melissa said. I never say his name out loud. Whose name, Flora asked. Never mind, I told them. This was all getting to be too much for me. Okay, Pete, let's go, Fudge said. Go, I asked. Yeah, you're taking me and Melissa. Wait a minute, 
I thought you were going with Flora and Fauna. No, they're taking Minnie. We couldn't possibly be responsible for more than one child, Farna said. Because we'll be busy taking notes for our report on the cultural event, Flora told me. Daddy says we have to write three pages, Fauna said. Single space, Flora added, in case I still didn't get it. Okay, okay, I said. Let's just go and get this over with. We all took the elevator to the 16th floor and started working our way down. At every apartment, the natural beauties sang a few lines from their collection of New York songs. East Side, West Side, 42nd Street, Give My Regards to Broadway, Manhattan. The neighbors loved it. They tried to shower the natural beauties with candy, but they politely refused. On the sixth floor, we met up with Olivia Osterman, who was just coming out of her apartment. She was wearing a long red cape. I'm going to a party, she said, holding a feathered bird mask in front of her face. You look a lot like Uncle Feather, except you're the wrong color, Fudge told her. I'm a nightingale, not a minor bird, Mrs. Osterman said as she pressed the button for the elevator. The Goldens, who also live on Six, opened their door. Mr. and Mrs. Golden and their daughter Gina were well wearing fright wigs. Happy Halloween, they sang together. They had vampire teeth in their mouths. Minnie growled at them. Before the natural beauties could get out two notes, the Golden's poodle started barking at Fuzzball. Fuzzball leaped out of the basket and ran for his life straight into the Golden's apartment. Fuzzball, come back here, Melissa called, chasing him. Mrs. Golden ran after Melissa, and Gina ran after Mrs. Golden. Mr. Golden just stood there in his fright wig and vampire teeth, holding bowl of candy bars. How many? Fudge asked. How many what? Mr. Golden said. Candies, Fudge said. How many can I take? Uh, how about one? Mr. Golden said. How about two? Fudge asked. Okay, two, Mr. Golden said. Minnie doesn't have a bag, Fudge told Mr. Golden, so I'll also take two for him. Mr. Golden said, four candy bars is a lot of candy. Not really, Fudge argued, because you said I could take two. Besides, Peter and Flora and Fauna aren't taking any, so it's a real bargain, he reached into the bowl again. I better take two for Melissa in case she forgets. What are you, an entrepreneur, Mr. Golden asked? No, I'm a miser, and he pointed to Minnie. And he's my double. Egg duff, Minnie said. Mr. Golden just shook his head. Melissa couldn't find Fuzzball anywhere in the apartment. Mrs. Golden asked me and the natural beauties to help look for him. I don't know how long it took to find Fuzzball, but I know it was too long, way too long, because by the time we found him on a top stack of towels in the bathroom closet, Fudge and Minnie were nowhere in sight. Did you see them leave? I asked Mr. Golden, who was offering the bowl of candy to another group of kids. Who? Mr. Golden asked. The misers, I told him when he looked blank. The little kids in the red suspenders. Oh, they left a long time ago. This is bad news, Flora cried. We're going to be in so much trouble, Fauna said. What do we do? They asked together. First, we'll take Melissa home, I said, taking charge. But I'm not done trick-or-treating, Melissa said. Maybe you're not, but your cat is, I told her. He's not my cat, he's my wizard. Either way, it's time for him to go home. I pressed the button for the elevator. Then we waited and waited and waited. Finally, I said, come on, we'll take the stairs. I led them down the back stairway. We met other groups of trick-or-treaters along the way. One of the fathers said, phew, these stairs are tough going. Another one muttered something about the new elevator. Yeah, I know, I told him. We waited on six, but it never came. Probably all those trick-or-treaters, he said. In the lobby, a group of neighbors had gathered around the video monitor. Henry, I said, you haven't by any chance seen... He pointed to the monitor. I looked at the screen, but it was too dark. You had to really look carefully to see anything. You could just make out somebody sitting on the bench waving a pencil flashlight. Wait a minute. Is that a bird mask? The light moved and landed on Minnie's face. What's going on? I asked Henry. They're stuck between floors, Henry said. Oh, no, the natural beauties cried. The light moved again and caught the control panel. You could see a small hand and then part of a face. It was Fudge. Can't you do something, I asked? Shh, Henry said. He's trying to use the intercom. This is Egduff Muriel, Yelraff Rose, and Avilo Varushka, Fudge said in a small voice. Avilo? I thought. And then I realized Avilo backwards is Olivia, 
So it was Olivia Osterman. This elevator won't go anywhere, Fudge said. It won't go up and it won't go down. And besides that, it's dark in here and hot. A buzz went through the group and the monitor was quiet. Quiet, please, Henry called. And then he pressed his talk button. Are you all right, Mrs. O? Can you breathe? She looks like a bird breather with her mask, Fudge said. Can you get us out of here, Mrs. Osterman asked very politely. Halloween comes just once a year, you know, and who knows where I'll be in a year from now. Help is on the way, Henry said. Will it be the fire department, Mrs. Osterman asked. I've always wanted to be rescued by one of those handsome young men. They should be here any minute, Henry said, along with the elevator maintenance crew. Don't worry, Fudge said. We're not hungry. We still have 47 candy bars to go. Yum, Minnie said, and we could see him eating one. The natural beauties asked Henry if they could talk to Minnie. Henry pressed his talk button. Minnie, it's Flora and Fauna. We love you. Don't be scared. He's not scared, Fudge said. Nobody's scared. We're going to sing now, Mrs. Osterman announced. You can listen to our special song. And the three of them began to sing the tune of Frere Jaca. Egg duff Muriel, egg duff Muriel, yell raff rose, yell raff rose, avilovarushka, avilovarushka, touch your nose or your toes. Word about the elevator spread through the building. Mom and Dad heard about it from one of the trick-or-treaters who came to their door. They ran down all 12 flights of stairs. Howie and Eudora heard about it at about the same time. Cousin Howie pushed through the crowd, which had grown. I'll take charge now, Henry. I'm a park ranger. I know what to do in cases of emergency. Sorry, Cousin H., Henry said, but in this case, I'm in charge, and I've turned the operation over to the fire department and the emergency elevator maintenance team. They're on the scene now. How long have they been trapped in the elevator, Dad asked. Close to 40 minutes, Henry said. Oh, Eudora moaned. Water, Mom called. Somebody bring her a glass of water, and she helped Eudora to a chair. I want to talk to my son, Dad said. Sure thing, Mr. H. Henry put Dad on the intercom. Fudge, this is Dad. Talk to me, please. Hi, Dad, Fudge said. Avilo taught us this game. Avilo, Dad said? That's Olivia spelled backwards, I whispered. See, first you think up an animal, Fudge said, describing the game to Dad. And then you try to make the others guess which animal it is. I did panda, and Minnie guessed it. Sounds like a good game, Dad said. How is Minnie? He's resting now, Fudge shined Mrs. Osterman's flashlight on Minnie. He was stretched out across the bench, and his head was on Mrs. Osterman's lap. She was fanning him with his bird mask. Fudge, let me talk to Mrs. Osterman, Dad said. Hello, dearie, she said. Don't worry, we're all right. Just a big anxious. We'd like to be out of here. Dad, Fudge said. Guess how many candy bars Minnie ate? Candy, Cousin Howie said. Seven so far, Fudge said, but now he has a tummy ache. That's why he's resting. Cousin Howie grabbed the inner arm. Farley, no more candy. Got that? Before Minnie could answer, the lights in the elevator came on and we could hear the whirr of a fan. Oh my, Mrs. Osterman said, that feels good. Then a guy in uniform dropped into the elevator from a hatch in the ceiling. We heard a noise and a minute later, Fudge said, we're moving. And just in time, dearie, Mrs. Osterman said, just in time. When the elevator door opened, a handsome firefighter escorted Mrs. Osterman out with Fudge and Minnie following right behind. Make room for Mrs. O, Henry called, and the crowd parted. Well, she said, I see I didn't miss the party after all. The party seems to be right here in the lobby. As soon as she said it, you knew it was going to happen. Within minutes, the neighbors were carrying food and drinks to the lobby. The trick-or-treaters followed. Mr. Riley brought down his keyboard. The natural beauties ran upstairs and returned with their tap shoes. Mr. Willard proposed a toast. To our heroes, Olivia, Fudge, and Minnie. You mean Avilo, Eggduff, and Yelraff, Fudge asked. Yes, Mr. Willard, that's exactly who I mean. Mr. Reese said, here's to their resourcefulness, Mr. Perez said, and here's to their sense of humor. Three cheers for Eggdaff, Ralph, Yelraff, and Avilo. There was cheering. The lobby doors opened and the Tubmans came in from outside. They were dressed as the three bears. What's going on? Sheila asked. Did I miss something? Candy, Minnie said. Yum. That was quite the event. Stay tuned for chapter 16, our last chapter. It's called 
you never know. Bye-bye, cool cats.